Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen us. So in all things, be my life and bread. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. Hey guys! Hey! Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Butterfly Ambassadors. Money Motivations with your host, Jaleesa Cogdell. I am so excited to share with you what God has for us on today. It is October 29th. Lord have mercy. We have flown by this month. And yes, we are still celebrating my husband's birthday. So I'm so excited what God is going to be doing in this message for all of us on today to receive a word from him. If you've seen the thumbnail or the little clips here and there that God has allowed us to see, like a minute clip on my social media accounts, then you've seen the title is don't stress just pray so it's simple god gave it to me literally like within like a hour after spending time with him just gave it to me and i was just writing and i love to write so he just kind of gives it to me when we're having alone time so i'm excited for what god has today so without further ado i'm gonna pray us and let the holy spirit have his way and let God be glorified and pleased with the message he's given us. So I pray you guys have your journals out, your pens ready to write because what God has for us today, we all need it. Okay, so without further ado, let's pray on in. All right, Heavenly Father, we adore you, we love you, we honor you, we exalt your holy name. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. You are our rock. You are everything that we need. We love you, Lord Jesus. There's none like you. No one ever be put before you, Father God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the author and finisher of our faith. We love you dearly. We thank you for sending your only begotten son so that we could have a relationship with him, so that we can connect with you. So God, we thank you for that sacrifice. We thank you for that love. We thank you for showing us unconditional love through that sacrifice. Holy Spirit, replace Jesus' words with your words in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move in a mighty way. God, this is none of me but all of you. I pray your people are listening. I pray that their ear gates are in tune with what you have for them to hear on today. I pray their eye gates are ready to just tune in and hear what you have to say. No distractions in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for this avenue, this platform to share the love of Christ with your people. I seal this prayer with the precious blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of the sacrificial land to your people, that their mindsets are focused on you, their hearts are pure and towards you. I pray that they're steadfast, they're immovable. They're eager to learn your ways, Father God. They're eager to turn back to you. If they backslid, I pray they repent and get right with you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this message, Father God. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. All right, guys. Let's get to it. It's so fitting that God has given me the gift of being an intercessor. And the title is Don't Stress, Just Pray. I'm always praying. So, the first... Uh, note you can write down god gave it to me um i was reading one of the uh bible apps i believe you call it like a like a, a note that you can like read up on those plans and this is one thing that blessed my entire life so write this down it's prayer aligns our hearts with preferences that go according to god's will one more time prayer it aligns our hearts with preferences according to God's will. That's what prayer is supposed to do. So as believers, whenever things are going on in our natural world, <laughs> we tend to um, look on how to fix it, look on how to do X, Y, Z, how to get things done. You know, what's the plan? You know, what's the master plan? You know, how do I handle X, Y, Z? But in reality, God wants us to just pray to him. He wants us to seek him. He wants us to include him 
in our lives because he's the creator of our lives. So in order for us to flow in the will of God, we have to seek the Lord to know his will for our lives. So whenever there's a bill that's coming up that's due, whenever there's an altercation with, you know, a family member or a friend, whenever there's a situation um, that needs to be handled with in a calm matter, God wants us to pray. You know that coworker, that boss, you know, that you just, ooh, you have to pray before you go to work. You know, um, there's moments where you and your husband can have that um, disagreement and it's, you know, it just cuts below the belt sometimes and you don't want to be around them. You don't want to be loving to them. You don't want to show them attention or affection. But see, in those moments, God doesn't want you to have offense. You're not supposed to be having a spirit of offense Anyway, when you're a believer, God wants you to be loving and kind and walk in the spirit, walk in love, walk in forgiveness and pray about it. Because there's probably in the season that you're currently in, that situation, there's probably a time where God wants that person and you to spend time with him so that you both know how to handle that situation. Now, if that person that you're with, like a coworker or a family member is not a believer, then this is your opportunity to pray as unto the Lord so that you can be an example. You can be the light. You can be the light in the situation to allow the Lord to move on his, on his behalf and let him alter the heart of that person. You don't have to fix everything. Every person is not meant for you to alter or fix or counsel um so every single person that you come across in your paths of life you don't have to preach to you don't have to you know point the finger at or um tell them what to do you have to seek god you have to consult with god before doing anything and so prayer is a conversation with with god like it's a actual dialogue like there's actually um a question there's actually you know a request there's actually you know a solution to the problem when you seek the lord when you praise on him when you're intimate with god when you spend time with him he responds to you now this is the part where a lot of us as believers we miss we miss this part see it's a dialogue but god has a timing on when he wants to give you the information it's um, it's a matter of like a father and a child. Now, my husband said this other day, and I love this this analogy. So, um, when a father, you know, has a son or a daughter, they're not gonna give their three year old child car keys and say, "Hey, go drive." Like, there's a time and a place for that to happen. You know, there's a pruning that has to happen. There's development. There's a growth. There's internal development, there is spiritual development, there is physical development, right? So our loving God, there's a timing, there's a development, there's a spiritual, physical, mental development that God wants us to be pruned for him to give us that answer to that question or that prayer request. I pray you're following me. So write this down. Remember the first part, prayer aligns our hearts preferences with god's will see god plants the desires in our hearts for his will to be fulfilled his plans are perfect so when you seek the lord jesus is in matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god seek ye first it doesn't say middle it doesn't say last it says seek ye first so when chaotic moments happen, there's a bill that's coming up, there's an argument with the husband, spouse, there's a disagreement with a coworker, you know, there's an altercation with someone on the highway that slipped you the bird, whatever the case may be. Don't stress, don't get chaotic. The enemy loves that. See, the enemy knows what takes you off. The enemy knows what drives you up the wall. The enemy knows what's gonna push your buttons. The enemy knows what's gonna make you mad, angry. So in those moments, you have to you have to combat his fiery darts with prayer. Saying Jesus, saying God, I need you. God, show me your path. God, lead me. God, direct me. God, I need you to show me how to get out of this feeling, emotion of I want to do it my way. I'm stressed. I'm anxious. I'm frustrated. I am mad. I'm angry. This is not working for me. Like. I don't care like you have to you have to ask the Lord to dissect you from those emotions because that's from the enemy. 
you can't go to God in that emotion. You have to ask the Lord to remove that from you because you can't have any clutter, any any uncleanliness within you and expect God to just answer the prayer. Like you have to remove that from you and say, God, I need you to clean me from this. Lord, I am a hot mess. Lord, I am frustrated. Lord, I am upset. Lord, I'm mad. Lord, remove that from me. Like, help me to get back in the right standing with you. Help me to get back to being loving. Help me to get back to where I can confide in you and talk with you and not yell and not scream and not holler because God is sovereign. God is holy. We come to him with reverence. We come to him with gratitude. We come to him with love. He knows what you're going through, love. He already knows what you're going through. But see, the enemy wants you to get so riled up. He wants your feathers all ruffled. He wants you to look crazy. He wants you to literally look crazy. But that's not who God has called you to be. You are not anxious. You are not stressed. That's a spirit of the enemy. As believers, we are not to be stressed. We are to be peaceful, loving, excited for what God's going to do in our lives. When tests and trials come, we should count that all joy. I know that sounds um, different to hear in this calm way, but in reality, if you are not going through something, you should really analyze your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're not going through something, then something is wrong with your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because uh, the Bible clearly says persecution will happen. The Bible clearly says he who suffers, there will be a great reward for that suffering for righteous sake. So if you're not going through something, if you're not going through a situation in your life where it is tough, it is just like, Lord, I need you, then that means you're running your life by yourself or you're answering to the enemy. You need Jesus. We all need God. We all need him. But we are not to operate in a stressful emotion or a stressed, you know, end all be all or um, we're just uh, too stressed to even pray to God. Like there's no there's no amount of situation that's too big for God. Like there's nothing too hard for him. So as a believer... I pray you're hearing this. Like, God is really speaking to somebody out there. Like, if you're going through something right now, like, give it to Jesus. Like, the Lord has put in the, these these amazing moments in our Bible for reasons. Like, when Peter was on the boat, he was looking at the storm. See, his focus was so caught off of just looking, focusing on Jesus Christ. If he would just focus on Jesus and not look at his circumstances, look at the storm and the wind and all this movement, he would, he would not have sunk in. But God is showing us clear as day, don't stress don't don't get overwhelmed you know don't look at what your circumstance really is look to me just look to me come to me i got you just focus on me don't look at the ways of the world don't look at what so and so is talking about you what you assume they think about you or um what your boss thinks about you all these like look to me focus on me don't look at what your, your bank account says right now look at me i provide all your needs don't look at that biological clock that you think is ticking look to me i can open and close your womb don't look at the the ring that's not in the finger yet look to me look to me stop being material stop being materialistic i say when you are to be married to the person that i have set for you to be with trust god's timing doesn't need to be stressed stop looking at social media for how your life is supposed to work out, for how your life is supposed to be. God has your life penned. It's already orchestrated the way he wants it to flow because he wants to bless you in this beautiful life he's given you. But he does not want you to be stressed. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to cling to him. He wants you to seek him in the season that you're currently in. Because he wants to prune you. He wants to develop you. He wants you to sh be strengthened in the area of faith, of trusting him. God wants you to trust him. Not the ways of the world. Not what the enemy's thinking or what he's telling you to think or all these other emotions. He doesn't want you to put your trust in man either. 
He wants you to wholeheartedly trust in him. Many times when our life is in hiatus, when it's like chaotic, when it's like literally like down, like when we're at rock bottom, most people say, God, I need you. <laughs> most people say, God, I need you. I'm, I'm literally a diamond in the rough. Like I need help. And it, it, it it's unfortunate that it, God has to allow us to get to that point and allow the enemy to operate in our lives in that point where we're so devastated and we're so, you know, distressed and just like, Lord, I'm just a hot mess. Like, I need you. It's unfortunate that we have to get all the way down to that point for us to realize who we needed in the first place is Jesus. To connect with the Father, we have to have that relationship. Without that relationship, we're going to fall. We have to connect with God. We have to connect with him. It's just like your phone right now, your computer. When you don't charge it, it's going to die. It's not going to work. It will not function properly. So for us to know who we are in Christ, for us to flow in this life that God's given us, for us to get that promotion, get that marriage, get that amazing job, have those beautiful children, do the will of the Lord, we have to connect with Jesus. We have to connect with the Father through Jesus Christ with our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what God wants us to focus on. So in order for us to know who we are in Christ, we have to pray and know our identities in Christ and seek the Father in prayer. Meditate on the word of God. Pray to God. Be intimate. Spend quality time with the Lord, not just on Sundays. Spend quality time with him each day. Each day. Each day you are blessed to have breath to breathe, to have lungs, to work, to have blood, to flow in your entire body, to circulate properly, to have your brain fr function with all the right cells and organisms and, and, and everything working in its right place. That's nothing but Jesus, like nothing but God, Holy Spirit, just orchestrating that all together and making it flow. It's amazing that finally science is catching up with what God has already said in the Bible. It's a blessing. So let's go ahead and go to... Proverbs because God wants us to really focus on these scriptures alone. So I thank God for this because God wants us to re be reminded of who he is to us. I think a lot of us are getting too caught up in these lottery pickings and our president and um, people are just getting too caught up in the ways of the world and naturally thinking it's a spiritual warfare going on right now. And people are not praying. A lot of people are just not praying. They're choosing um, to do their own will. Mm, Jesus. I pray that as you're watching this, you are in tune with your creator. You are in tune with who you serve. You are in tune with who you know to be the God Almighty, the Sovereign Lord. The Alpha and the Omega, I pray that as you're watching this, you analyze, are you serving the Lord Jesus? Are you stressing or are you praying? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. We're in the NLT version. The title says, Trusting in the Lord. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Wow. God is so amazing. What do your coworkers say about you in the office? Like, what is your reputation in your family? Like, what is your reputation? Like, what do people say about you? That you actually know. I'm not talking about people that gossip and do things that are not of the Lord. I'm talking about your people that you work with on your job or your friends. Um, even 
you know, your significant other. What is what do they what do they say about you? Like, what is the reputation that you have right now? Do people know that you even know Christ? Do people know that you love the Lord? Do people know that you are a Christian? Do people know? Can they identify there's a light within you, that there's a joy within you, that there is something different that radiates through you? Can they identify that you are different, that you are unique, that you are wonderfully and fearfully made? Or are you just in the crowd? Are you just an employee? Are you are you not living Christ-like on the job? Are you not being the example, exhibiting peace, exhibiting love, exhibiting joy, exhibiting goodness, making it self-control. For example, there was a question um, at my job yesterday, um, a couple of wonderful gentlemen uh, that were just asking some questions my coworkers, and um, I stood my ground. And they wanted my opinion um, about looking at... Um, the backside of another person want in a relationship, um, meaning the gentleman uh, looking at another female in front of the female, and I stood my ground. Um, I, I was informing him, like, for sir, you asked my opinion. Um, that is actually an example of you disrespecting the lady that you are with. And I broke it down to him simply in this way. Um, when you are with someone that you are supposed to be with and you actually love that person, there's no need for you to want to even entertain anybody else or look at anybody else or even focus your eyes on anyone else because that's a love of disrespect that you would not want to partake in. When you truly love someone, when you are truly invested in someone that you would like to spend the whole rest of your life with, there's no need to entertain that lustful desire. And of course, the response was, oh, that's too deep. That's too deep. Um, well, you asked my opinion. I'm just going to give you a factual response. I informed the gentleman that I will give you a factual response. Um, there's, not, there's, there's no reasoning. There's no point for me to be stressed or, you know, uh, taken guard. Um, I'm a happily, joyfully blessed married woman. So uh, it was an honor to share that opinion because a lot of guys... A lot of boys, a lot of men do not know this truth. You do not have to look at other females behind. You don't have to look at other women in general, especially when you're with someone. No. No, you do not have to do that. You do not have to do that. Um, as a man, um, there's a level of respect um, that I pray um the spirit will just draw you to understanding why it's important to uh, respect the boundaries. Because not only are you just uh, going after your fleshly desires or lusting after that young lady, but you're also looking at somebody else's potential wife. So um, there's so many barriers that you're going into when you allow uh, the fleshly desires to come out and you want to do what you want to do. Um, but have you sought after the Lord? Have you even asked God, is this the wife you want me to be with, Lord? Is this who you desire for me to be with? And that's the, my prayer is that men um, seek the Lord. You know, pray, ask the Lord, is this who you have me to be with? You desire marriage. God has put that within your heart. That desire you have, God has given that gift to desire it. He's placed it within your heart. Have you consulted with God to say, Lord, is this the lady you want me to be with is this the lady you want me to pursue is this who you have for me lord jesus i don't want to miss who you have for me of course there's plenty of beautiful women out in the world but god i don't want to miss who you have for me i want to be led by you so my prayer for for men out there uh seek the lord don't stress you know don't get caught up in the ways of the world get don't get caught up in social media trends uh seek out the lord trust god he has the lady that he wants you to have you know uh, i wrote this down as well earlier uh write this down uh, sometimes god will bring us through strange situations to test our faith and accomplish his plans 
So there'll be times like this moment with my job where people ask you questions or they'll ask for your opinion. And you can be factual. You can be scripture, text-based. You can uh, let the Lord lead your tongue um, and allow them uh, to ponder, you know, allow them to take it in. Um, of course, um, I disagreed with, you know, his reasonings of why he chose to look at women. And he uh, felt that my response was too deep. <laughs> but... um. Uh, my, my prayer is that, you know, the spirit will draw him and he will know the truth. But um, for you out there, when you go through different situations, don't be stressed or uh, feel like you have to, you know, argue. Just let the Lord lead you and just say what you what you led to say and be done. You know, like end it on a great note, you know, end it with a respectful response and say have a great evening and God bless you, you know, and just you know, keep going. Don't, you know, stress over it or, you know, go back and forth in your mind of what he thinks about you or how did it, like, just give it to Jesus. Like, once you said what God says, what God has told you to say, you're done. So let's go ahead and go to Romans 8.28, one of my favorite scripture verses. This is so fitting for this text. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8.28. Thank you, Lord. Okay, this says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. A lot of believers read this scripture and they miss out on some important key components that God has put in this beautiful scripture. Let me read that one more time. So nobody's misconstrued, no one's taking things out of context, okay? Okay. This says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Let's stop there, okay? So, if people are doing things that are not according to God's text, like not, like if people are out there uh, fornicating, you know, just drinking, you know, excessively, just just drunk all the time, just smoking weed, just doing cocaine, just doing whatever they want to do. They don't love God, okay? Like, it, it clearly says, it clear. okay, so, um, okay, so, I want to make sure people are understanding that. Like, you can't um, use a scripture and just put it wherever you want to put to in a situation and say, oh, well, you know, got to work it out for them, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Make sure that you are led by the Holy Spirit. You can't just say certain things. You can pray for them as the Lord leads you. Yes. But they have to receive salvation, to enter into what the kingdom has for the people that actually go through persecution for righteous sake is a difference. When people choose to do things outside of God's will, then they're going to be judged on what they decide to do. Now, when people have a relationship with Jesus Christ and they are going through a test or a trial or persecution because of a pruning or a growth development in the area that God wants to strengthen them in, then yes, it's all going to work out. Um, let, let me give you this example because I feel like uh, there's some people that may not have this un un understood. So when someone decides to, you know, fornicate, decides to, they know that it's not of the Lord, okay? They know that that is displeasing in God's eyes, but they decide to do it anyway and continue in it and just have this lifestyle okay um when they decide to do that and choose that they are choosing a lifestyle that's outside of the realm of what god likes they chose that so whatever judgment that they receive from god that's it now if there's a a person that has fornicated, but they have decided to give their life to Christ and want to uh, forfeit that lifestyle and actually repent to the Lord Jesus Christ. They have um, given that area of their life to Jesus for them to be um, circumcised in their hearts and have a pure, clean heart and no condemnation. And now they are living for Jesus. Then, yes, it's going to work out that they will get what God has for them. I pray you guys see that difference. There's a huge difference. So um, there's a huge difference from being led by the Holy Spirit 
and being led by the flesh of desires. Huge difference. There's a relationship that needs to happen, and that's from receiving salvation through Jesus Christ. And once you are entered into that relationship with Jesus Christ, you are now in a newness. You are renewed in the mind, so you're not going to want to uh, tamper or even even entangle with sin because this, is, this pleases God. Okay? So I pray that resonates with your spirit. Okay, let's keep going forward. So this says, to them who are called. Okay? Many are called, few are chosen. So I pray that you understand that when God calls you to a particular ministry, evangelism, uh, usher ministry, choir director, um, when God calls you to those different categories that pleases the Lord, you're ministering as unto the Lord. You're not ministering to people. Okay? There's a difference. Um, God does not want circus clowns. We just, that's a, God, that God is not looking for, um, you to put on a show, okay? God does not want a circus act. He doesn't want actors. God is looking for the intentionality of a pure heart. He will call those faithful ones because they have prayed to God for that gift or they have prayed to God for, um, direction, for wisdom, um, just for understanding of what he's given them, that, that gift, that connection, that one-on-one -on -one time. And then going further, it says, who are called according to his purpose. There's, there's, see, there, there, there's components in the scripture that a lot of people tend to uh, overread or dismiss or just read really fast. But God is very strategic. All we know Forgive me. And we know that all things work together for good, for good. So it looks bad to the eye. It's going to work all good in God's eye. See, God already knows your end. He is the author and finisher of your faith. But see, your faith has to be tested so that you can grow. When you praise unto the Lord and your, your prayer life will be strengthened, your heart will be Focus on what God wants you to do, the will he has for you. Like everything will be in line. Everything will flow according to God's will for your life because it says it here. And we know that all things work together. So the season you're at currently right now is not the end all be all because it's all going to work out together for your good because you love the Lord, because you have given your life to Christ, because you know that he has a purpose and plan destined for you personally, you. So what you're going through right now season that you're currently in is temporary it's not gonna be like this always is because you trust god you believe in god you trust him you're waiting on that promise because you trust god you're not gonna stress about nothing because you can pray you know how powerful prayer is there's a what there we have a, a weapon a beautiful weapon of prayer god hears your prayers especially when you're called according to his purpose okay all right let's keep going forward so god reveals everything put our trust in god and he will take care of the rest let's go to philippians 4 6 philippians 4 6 it reads this be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So now that we've had that foundation set, we have a relationship now, right? Now there's going to be intimacy. Now we're going to talk to the Lord Jesus. There's a dialogue. Remember, we talk to God. He responds. We talk to the Lord. He responds. We praise unto the Lord. He responds. We praise God. He responds. We exalt Father God. He responds. We just sit still before the Lord. He responds. There's a dialogue there. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. But in everything by prayer. See, everything. We pray for everything. You pray for that boss. You pray before you go to work. You pray we go to work. You pray for your husband. You pray for your bedroom. You pray for your laundry. You pray for everything. For machines to work in your house. If that microwave is acting funny, you pray in the name of Jesus that it will work in Jesus' name. You pray. I pray that people don't forget that prayer is powerful. Yes, there's handyman's. Yes, you know, there's YouTube. But Jesus, can we pray as unto the Lord? There's Google, but can we praise unto the Lord? Can we seek him first? Let's keep going further. God is greater than your struggle. Woo! God is greater than the struggle you are facing. He is greater than this, the struggle that you're facing. He's greater than the hump. Like, 
It is a test to build you, to, to strengthen you. God wants you to be strengthened. God wants you to grow in areas. I mean, even myself, God has strengthened me. There's a newness within me where people can't say just anything to me. Like, it won't get, to, it won't fester. Like, it won't make me feel less than. It won't make me feel belittled. It won't make me feel like I have to have an attitude or clap back. Like, no, like, I'll just say, God loves you and keep it moving. Like, God has given me that joy, that love, that peace, that strength. But it's because I've spent time with him. I prayed it on to him. I love him. Like, I love the Lord with all my heart. Like, I genuinely have a relationship with him. Like, I seek him before I do anything. Like, I had to ask him, Lord, what do you want me to wear? What do you want me to cook? How do you want my hair? How do you want my makeup? Like, I, I consult with, like, I consult with the Lord Jesus before I even got the job that God's given me now. Every single job that uh, asked me to work for them, I had to consult with God first. I can't just up and just move when I want to do something. Like, even, like, when I'm cooking, I have to say, Lord, is this what I'm going to cook for my husband? Like, what do you want me to do, Lord Jesus? Is this the soap you want me to buy? Is this what you want me to put on my body? Like, I have to ask the Lord, what do you want me to do, Lord Jesus? What message do you want for me to say to your people? This is none of me, all of you. But God, what do you want me to say to your people? Don't stress, just pray. Yes, Lord, let's do it. What do you do? Do you consult the Lord Jesus with everything? Do you ask God, what do you want me to do, Lord Jesus? Are you stressed? Are you trying to figure things out by yourself? Are you trying to, you know, connect the dots? You have plan A all the way to plan Z. I only want plan G and that's God. That's all the only plan I want is God because the plans that he has for me are perfect. Let's keep going. Okay. So what you're going through is a temporary season to strengthen your faith. Praise God. Let's read Luke 16, 10 NLT version. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. If you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things... You won't be honest with greater responsibilities. If you cannot even remember to clean your car, you know, or I mean something small. I mean just like cleaning your car or like, you know, washing the dishes, some just something minute, you know. How can you be prepared for the baby you want? Like how can you be prepared for the marriage you want if you have not even thought to learn how to cook yet like how can you be prepared for god to bless you with a million dollars when you can't even tie ten dollars like how can you be prepared to receive an amazing car when you cannot even keep the car note to your first one like god wants you to be faithful with what he's already given you if you can't be faithful with the eight dollar hour wage you have now how can god bless you with the twenty dollar an hour job like how can god trust you with more when you haven't been faithful with little ask yourself do you stress about everything are you praying are you asking god for wisdom are you asking god for help in this area that you're struggling with god wants to help you with, with your finances but are you faithful in little you want million dollars you want the mansion you want this big house but can god trust you with paycheck to paycheck lifestyle can, can god trust you with the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle can you save can you tithe can you pay bills on time or are you always looking out for a handout like like can god trust you with what you already have before he blesses you with more too much is given as much required are you ready for what god wants to give you or are you sipping on that milk God wants to give you the meat of the word of God. He wants to show you newness. He wants to encompass you with his great and wonderful goodness. But are you prepared for it? God wants to prepare you for what he has and ready to receive what he wants to give you. But are you stressing or are you praying? Last but not least, write this down. In the darkest times of your life, your praise to God should be the loudest. Let the enemy know you are not afraid of the dark because you're the light. 
You're not afraid of the dark. The bills come, you know God's going to provide your needs. If there's an argument in the house, you know God's going to have peace in your house because you serve the God of peace. So you already know that the enemy's defeated. So no stress. You trust God with all your heart. Your praise should be loud. You should literally be screaming, God, you are so amazing. God, I love you because of who you're serving. No stressing. You declare and decree as God leads you who your God is. Like, who is the God that you're serving? Do you know who he is for yourself? And last but not least, Proverbs eleven twenty eight. Friends out there, trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. Trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. Are you stressing? Does money own you? The love of money is the root of evil. Nothing wrong with having money. But the love of money is the root of evil. So are you putting your trust in your bank account? In your finances? In your checkbook? In the lottery tickets? What is your what is your what is your heart lie? What is your hope in? What is your trust in? When you go to bed at night, what is the last thing that you say? What is the last thing that you listen to? Do you pray at night? Do you pray in the morning? Do you pray during the day? Do you pray at work? Do you pray when you're home? Do you pray in the car? Ask yourself, how is your prayer life? If there's a lot of stress and chaos going on in your life, ask yourself, how is your prayer life? How is your intimacy with God? Friends, God is asking his people where does your heart lie do you truly love the lord with all your heart mind and soul or do you love yourself no stressing no stressing god does not want us to stress we don't have that spirit god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power but of love in a sound mind. So just pray. Continue to seek the Lord and do the will of him. Trust in God with all your heart. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much. He wants you to trust in him with your heart. Will you? Heavenly Father, we love you. We adore you. We exalt your holy name. We pray this word was sown on solid ground. We pray your people have heard this message on tonight. We pray that they extend their entire lives to you. They cast their cares upon you, Lord Jesus. I pray that they submit their ways to you and they just cling to you, Father God. They draw near to your sphere, Father God. They just feel your presence forevermore in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Father God, they have encounters with you that never had before, Father God. I pray they just have a prayer life with you that's more in tune, more intentional in the name of Jesus. Father God, you have your way, Father God. Replace their thoughts with your thoughts. Replace their ideas with your ideas, Father God. Replace their thinking, their their thought processes, their, their words with your words, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray to submit to you to resist the enemy, for he will flee in the name of Jesus. Lord, I love you, Lord Jesus. I pray your people heard this word in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. All right, guys. This has been Money Innovations. Once again, don't stress. Just pray. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Jaleesa Cogdale. Make sure you like and subscribe to his YouTube channel below. And I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.